everyone, and welcome to Wisdom Wednesday. My name is Tara Obona, and I have some announcements to carry you throughout the rest of the week. On February 17th at 7 p.m., we will be having our Yoruba service, Adura Agbayori, here at church or on Zoom. Also, on February 20th, we will be having our weekly Sunday service. You can attend one of two services at 9 a.m. or 11 a.m., or you can tune in online via our Facebook, our website, or on YouTube. The GTC Youth Church will also be having service upstairs at 11 a.m. That being said, sit back, relax, and enjoy an amazing Bible study experience here at Wisdom Wednesday.
Casting crowns, lifting hands, we're bowing hearts, it's all we've come to do. Casting crowns, we're lifting hands, and bowing hearts, it's all we've come to do. See, casting crowns, casting crowns.
you today to our Wisdom Wednesday, and it's always a delight for us to be together looking into the wisdom of God and sharing the Word of God. We are continuing again in the book of Jonah, looking at God's wisdom for us, for my family, for your family, from the book of Jonah. But before we continue with that, let's first of all thank the Lord for a time of worship and a time of praise. Father, we are grateful. We always have the privilege of coming before you with our praise and with our worship. Thank you, Lord, as we have entered into your presence with thanksgiving. Enter into your court with praise. Lord, be glorified in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are going to take a word of prayer from Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3 from verse 19. I'm reading it from Good News Translation, Lamentations chapter 3, from verse 19. The Word of God says, the thought of my pain, I don't know the pain you are going through, my hopelessness, I don't know the kind of hopelessness that you are experiencing, is bitter poison, is bitter poison. I think of it constantly, and my spirit is depressed. I don't know the challenge you are going through that is depressing you. I don't know what you and your family, you are always thinking about, always meditating about, instead of meditating on the Word of God, that has bringing depression to you. 
This is what lamentation is talking about. He said, yet, hope returns when I remember this one thing. And I pray for you this day that your hope will return in the name of Jesus. There will be restoration of hope in your family over that situation, over that matter, in the name of Jesus. And the, verse 22 says, the Lord's unfailing love. What did he remember? What do I want you to remember today? It says, the Lord's unfailing love and mercy still continue. And I just want you to pray over yourself and your family. Lord, let your unfailing love continue. Let your mercy continue in my life. Your unfailing love, as it has been pronounced, it does not fail. Your mercy, Lord, let it continue. The word of God in verse 23 says, fresh as the morning and sure as the sunrise. Pray for that kind of unfailing love right now, that the unfailing love of God, the unfailing love of Jesus Christ, will be fresh as the morning in your home, fresh as the morning in your family, fresh as the morning over all those situations, and that it will be as sure as the sun that rises. In other words, that love of Christ, that mercy of God, will rise again in your family, rise again for you and I, in the name of Jesus. And in verse 24, it says, The Lord is all I have. And so in him I put my hope. I want you to talk to the Lord right now. You are all that I have. Heavenly Father, you are all that I have. And so in you, Lord, I put my hope. In you, Lord, I put my trust. Can you anchor that problem on God? Can you anchor that situation on him? Can you genuinely put your trust in him? Just talk to him right now from your heart. That, Lord, from this moment, you are all I have. I do not have plan B. I do not have plan C or D. You are all I have. You are all my plan. And in you, Lord, I put my hope and trust in the name of Jesus. And this is what the, Lord, what the word of God says in verse 25. The Lord is good to everyone who trusts in him. And I pray for you and your family that the Lord will be good to you in this season. The Lord will show you his kindness. The Lord will visit you. You will hear God in that situation. God will manifest in that challenge. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is good to everyone. The Lord will be good to everyone in your family. For as many as are hearing me right now, where, wherever you are, in whatever nation, whatever city you are located, the Lord will be good to you. And the Lord, who, who you are putting your trust on right now, he will show you his kindness. In the name of Jesus. In verse 26, it says, So it is best for us to wait in patience to wait for him to save us. And I pray that grace to wait for him, receive it in the name of Jesus. And as you receive that grace right now, the grace to wait, the grace to be patient, I also pray that as you are waiting, your waiting will not be in vain. The, your salvation is soon. Your, what you are waiting for is soon. It's already on the way. It's already by your door. That miracle is already approaching. It will get to you. You will hold it. You will share the thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. You will share the testimony in the name of Jesus. You will confess the goodness of the Lord, even over that situation. Can we say thank you, Jesus? Father, we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, we give thanks. Hallelujah. Once again, thank you for joining us on this Wisdom Wednesday. This is House of Faith, Arlington, Texas. And we are looking at the book of Judah. There is always the wisdom of God. So we are looking at the wisdom of God in the book of Jonah. Uh, for people who have been with us since we have started this, this teaching, since we have started these studies, I believe that you are able to catch up. But as much as possible, I know there is a word of God for you today, and you will be able to receive it in Jesus' name. We are reading Jonah chapter 1 from verses 7 to 12. Jonah chapter 1, 7 to 12. And that's, if you haven't been with us, please take your time and read from verse 1. It says, the sailors, I'm reading good news translation, good news translation. It says, the sailors said to each other, let's draw lots and find out who is to blame for getting us into this danger. They did so, and Jonah's name was drawn. So they said to him, now then tell us, who is to blame for this? What are you doing here? What country do you come from? 
what is your nationality? Verse 9, I'm a Hebrew. Jonah answered, I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made land and sea. Jonah went on to tell them that he was running away from the Lord. The sailors were terrified and said to him, that was an awful thing to do. That was an awful thing to do. The storm was getting worse all the time. So the sailors asked him, what should we do to you to stop the storm? What a question. Verse 12, our last verse, it says, Jonah answered, throw me into the sea and it will come down. I know it is my fault that you are caught in this violent storm. I pray every violent storm will come to an end in the name of Jesus. Just to refresh you, that Jonah was a prophet of God. Jonah was a prophet of God in the Old Testament. And Jonah disobeyed God because he decided to go in opposite direction or travel in different direction from God's request, from God's command. God said, go to Nineveh. He decided he was going to go to Tarshish. So then let's look at where we stopped last week. And that was in the question that came to Jonah, the question that the sailors asked Jonah. And that's in, in verse 8. Let's look at that question again. He says, so they said to him, now tell us, who is to blame for this? What are you doing here? And I ask you, this challenge you are going through, who is to blame for it? This situation in your family, who really is to blame for it? This problem you have been going through for so many years, who really is to blame for it? And he says, what are you doing here? And that may be another question to you, really. What are you doing where you are? Is that where you are supposed to be? Is that what you are supposed to be doing? Is this the call of God upon your life? Is this what God is asking you to do at this time? So I don't know what that question means to you. What are you doing here? The next one is, what country do you come from? In other words, really... What's your foundation? What's your origin? And he said, what's your nationality? I know my nationality is heaven. My nationality is from Jesus Christ. So this is a, a situation of identity. Who really are you? And the who really are you here is who are you in Christ? Even when you are in crisis, you have to be able to answer this question. Who really are you in Christ? Even when you are in crisis. Your identity must not be in doubt. Thank the Lord that even Jonah in his challenge, in his disobedience, he was still bold enough to say, yes, this is who I am. And that was when he began to answer their question. And that was in verse 9. He, he didn't waste time to tell them who he was. But I want you to know that it's very important you hold on to your identity no matter what the situation may be. Don't ever deny your God. Don't ever turn your back against God, no matter what is going on in your life. Even at that instance, Jonah didn't deny who he was. I encourage you, whatever you are going through, wherever you are walking, don't blend in, don't compromise, don't give in, don't get so discouraged that you begin to deny God. Hallelujah. Then we want to look at it again. <laughs> and that's the response of Jonah. In verse 9, Jonah said, I am a Hebrew. Jonah answered, I worship the Lord. Praise God for that. I want to ask you, are you still worshiping the Lord? When last did you worship God? When last did you call on the name of the Lord? When last did you join be other believers in worship. When last have you been in the midst of congregation giving praise to God? He says, I am a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Who made land and sea. Can you imagine Jonah even inside that ship that was violently being blown by the wind? He still confessed that it's God made the land, even the sea. Do you know that no matter what you are going through, 
God is still in charge. God is still in control. If you are living on land and not hanging, God still made the land. Even when you think you are hanging, God still made everything. The wind that blows, the air that you enjoy. Jonah, even in the sea that he was having challenge, he said God has ownership. And I want you to know that God is in control of your life. It's in control of whatever is going on in your life. The Bible says Jonah went on to tell them that he was running away from the Lord. But I want you to understand that Jonah's answer and response is very important. And that is the way your response is also important to God. As you begin to see when, the, when we go into this teaching more, you'll be wondering how could God bring such a salvation? To a man who disobeyed him. But if you hear his word here, he never denied who God was. He never denied his identity. And I can tell you as long as you hold on to your identity in Christ, in spite of the crisis, your salvation will come. Your deliverance will come without any shadow of doubt. You know, he clearly told them, I worship the Lord. That's who I am. Don't, 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 don't just think that I'm just anybody, regardless of what is going on here. I'm still a servant of God. I'm still a prophet. That was exactly what he was saying. Your situation does not define you. Your circumstances do not reclassify you. Whatever you are going through does not change your name that is written in the book of life. Don't ever forget that, that what you, the moment, this moment does not change who you are to God, does not change your relationship with God. It must not. Don't allow it to take, change your relationship with God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they told Jonah clearly, it is an awful thing that you have done. It is a terrible thing to run from the Lord. Isn't it funny that the hidden were the people telling Jonah that it was a terrible thing to run from the Lord? Do you know that your neighbors are watching you? Your friends are even watching you, especially those who you have witnessed to in the past. Those who you have shared your testimony of how you came to Christ with them. Suddenly when you began to draw back, suddenly when you are no longer fervent, when the fire is no longer burning, they are wondering what's going on. They are wondering about your lifestyle. They are wondering what you have been doing. That is anything wrong with you? Are you okay? <laughs> and they are saying, why did you start so high and now you are operating so low? They told Jonah, it is a terrible thing to run away from the Lord. And I encourage you, don't run away from your maker, because the honest truth is there is nowhere to run to. There is nowhere to run to. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10, the Bible says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. <laughs> the name of the Lord, I can tell you, is the strongest tower. And you know what a tower is? So tall, I mean, so tall that... It does not matter the flood of this world. It does not matter the wind. If you run to that name, it's a strong tower. It's not a weak tower. It's not a weak tower. It says the righteous run to it and are saved. The only clause is your righteousness when you run into it. Once you can claim back your righteousness, you can reclaim your standing in the Lord, that strong tower of his name belongs to you. That's your hiding place. That's where you belong, even in time of crisis, because there is your salvation, there is your deliverance. Hallelujah. Jonah's request to be thrown into the sea. Wow. How can someone make such a request? Throw me into the sea. If you can do that, I think your, the problem in this ship should be over. I want you to know clearly that that was Satan speaking to Jonah. That was Satan speaking to Jonah. In Luke chapter 22, verse 3, 
In Luke chapter 22, verse 3, the Bible says, Then Satan entered Judas' son named Scariot, who was number among the twelve. The Bible says, Satan entered into Judas. I want you to know that Satan has entered into this story already with, jo with Jonah. And the only suggestion he brought to Jonah is, Tell them to throw you into the sea. Tell them to throw you into the sea. I want you to know that Satan is a betrayer and always suggests hopelessness to sinners. Please hold on to that. Whenever you disobey God, the suggestion of Satan to you will be hopelessness. He will tell you there is, it's finished. He will tell you you are finished. He will tell you there is no way out. Satan will tell you, say yourself you are in a box. So Satan will tell you, why are you still worshiping God? Why don't you kill yourself? Why don't you commit suicide? Why don't you die? He will tell you all sorts of things, so many things that the devil will tell you. That's because he's a betrayer, and he will capitalize your, your hopelessness. And that's why we started this, this, this teaching this afternoon, this evening, by telling you, do not be hopeless. Do not be hopeless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to read uh, a scripture in Matthew 27 from verses 3 to 5. Matthew 27 from verses 3 to 5. Matthew 27, verses 3 to 5. I'm reading this wrong from uh, a contemporary English version, a uh, very sweet Bible. It says, Matthew 27, 3 to 5, it says, Judas had betrayed Jesus, but when he learned that Jesus had been sentenced to death, he was sorry for what he had done. I want you to follow carefully. He returned the 30 silver coins to the chief priest and leaders and said, I have sinned by betraying a man who has never done anything wrong. Hear what he said. So what? That's your problem. That's Satan. That's the way Satan operates. He will lead you into sin. He will lead you against God. He will lead you into disobedience. But if you dare go back to him, because there is even nowhere to go back to him. Look at where, what happened to Judas when he went back to all these priests that they were satanically influenced together. It's, they told him, so what? That's your problem. Have you ever gone into an uh, unusual relationship? You have, ever, you have gone into a sinful relationship, and you realize you are pregnant, or you realize that you caught a, dis a disease, and then you go back to your partner and say, you know, I'm pregnant, and you say, so what? That's your problem. So what? I don't know anything about it. He says, so what? That's your problem, they reply. And the Bible says Judas threw the money into the temple. And look at the hopelessness. Look at what Satan had said to him. Then went out and hung himself. So Satan told Judas, what are you waiting for? Go and kill yourself. Go and hang. <laughs> people like you should not live again. And that's what Satan do minister to people. That's why we see a lot of suicide going on. Because the devil has said there is no hope again. Suggestion of hopelessness. It is Satan's gimmick. And don't give in to it. I don't know who's hearing me right now that you are hearing that voice. Go and commit suicide. Go and enjoy yourself. Go and take that piece and swallow it. This message is coming to you at this time for you to understand that Satan is a betrayer and is the one who will always suggest hopelessness. You have hope. Even against hope, the Bible says Abraham had hope. Against every hope, Abraham had hope, and God visited him. Even against your hope today, against all hope in your life today, the Lord will visit you in the name of Jesus. Now I want to go to one, something that is very important that is about the, the key of our discussion this evening. That is self-guilt. Self-guilt. There is no doubt that we should read this scripture very well for Jonah to suggest to the sailors that they should throw him into the sea. It was because he had put judgment on himself. He has judged himself to be guilty. And self-guilt is all over the place, especially among believers, those who are saved, 
those who have given their life to Jesus Christ. And what is self-guilt? It is when you put the guilt on yourself. I'm going further. It's taking responsibility for offense. And allowing you, there's not listening very well. Don't get, uh, don't get, don't misunderstand me. Yes, it's, it's good for you to take responsibility. It is good to say, yes, I did it. It is good to say, I went wrong. You know, I shouldn't have done it. But when it comes to self-guilt, it does not stop there. It will now allow you to have a negative impression about yourself. It has negative impact on you. You just realize that you, there is a, a, a broken relationship. The devil will tell you, didn't I tell you it was, this relationship was going to break because it's your fault, because you didn't do this, because you didn't do that. I, can I say to someone listening to me wherever you are right now, God is reordering your steps. God is redirecting your full step. You know, don't, 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 don't just cast that guilt on yourself and let it weigh you down. And, and, let, and let's, let's go further. When you, are, when you have self-guilt, what you do is you, you begin to put yourself down on purpose. You begin to relegate your person. You begin to devalue yourself because you think you have done everything wrong. And this is what leads to depression. Oh, I wish I had done more than that for my children. That's why, this, that's why this, this, these children are not doing well. That's why they are failing in college. That's why my daughter got pregnant. That's why my son is now taking drugs. That's what you, and you begin to say, oh, maybe if I had not been working, uh, maybe if I didn't work two jobs, then it wouldn't happen like that. Maybe if I didn't send them to, uh, out of state, maybe they would have been good children. No, 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 no. Yes, maybe, maybe, maybe. But don't let it impact negativity on you, on your family. I decree right now that situation, the Lord is going to reroute it. That circumstance that you think that you are making you to blame yourself, uh, making you to, to, to admit self-guilt and begin to think your, about yourself negatively, the Lord is going to turn it around in the name of Jesus. So before you know it, when you have self-guilt, it can lead to depression. You know, you, depressive thoughts begin to come to your mind, you know, because you think you are guilty and there is nothing good about you. It takes you to not have low mood. Suddenly, you are no longer talking to anybody again. You are no longer smiling. You have lost your joy, and the devil is saying, wow, I, I'm getting him. I, I'm, I'm you know, the, the Satan, he does not have any other ministry to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So before you know him, you, are, you now become an antisocial. You don't want to go anywhere. You are locking yourself inside the room. Some people now, the reason that they are not coming out to, to, to worship God, even though you call them, they'll tell you, oh, is this coronavirus? No, it's not coronavirus. It ain't coronavirus. What happens right now is you are put self-guilt on yourself, and you need to come out of it. You need to get out of it and let God do what he wants to do in your life. Hallelujah. So you begin to, before you know it, you know, your personality has changed. Nobody even knows who you are again. Nobody knows where you are. Nobody even knows what you are doing. You are no longer committed to anything. You are no longer accountable to any, anybody. You begin to isolate yourself. Why? Because you have self-guilt. Keeping to yourself might be because you have self-guilt. Overreacting to situation. You blow up on little minor things. You just you become violent unnecessarily. And like I said, it leads to suicide if you do not manage self-guilt very well. And I want you to know this today. Self-guilt is the devil in your mind. Don't forget this. Self-guilt is the devil that has taken over your mind. And I want you to let the devil go, release him from your mind right now. And I break that, that, that hold of the devil in your mind in the name of Jesus. I command the devil to, 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 to take his hand, to take his package, to take his, his property out of your mind in the name of Jesus. Don't ever forget that Satan still, he steals joy. He still the goodness of God that he has put there, if you don't manage it very well, don't allow self-guilt to dominate you. Whatever has happened 
as you are watching and listening to me, you learn one or two things there. You learn three or four things there. Whatever you are going through is it is something that is going to take you to where God wants you to go. As the GPS that we use on our day to day, we always reroute you when things go when you when you go the wrong direction. So also God in His mercy redirects you even when things have gone wrong. Don't ever think you are stranded. Don't ever think you are alone. Don't ever imagine that you are on your own. No, you are never on your own. The Spirit of God is in you. God loves you. Jesus loves you. And I know he will still do great things in your life. In the name of Jesus. Please don't blame yourself for that wayward child. Don't blame yourself for that wayward daughter or that wayward son. Don't blame yourself for that, for that failed marriage. No, no, no. Don't blame yourself. Don't blame yourself for, for the job you lost. Yeah, I know you might not have been your best. But I tell you, Christ in you is the hope of glory. And the Christ that is still in you is going to bring out his glory in your life. So cheer up. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let the devil lock you inside your house. Don't let the devil keep you quiet. Don't let the devil tell you there is no other way but to commit suicide. Don't let the devil tell you you are not beautiful. That's why you are not married. Don't let the devil tell you I told you because of what you did when you were a long time ago. That's why nothing is happening for you again now. Don't let the devil tell you that, you know, what you have done long time ago is why you are being punished now. Don't allow all those thoughts. As the devil bring them, always take them out. Take them out with the confidence in the word of the Lord. Take them out by knowing who you are in Christ. The identity don't let, don't let the devil tell you you don't have identity in Christ anymore. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I want you to look at what Revelations chapter 12, from verse 10 to 11, Revelations 12, 10 to 11. The Bible says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength. And I pray strength for you this, this moment in the name of Jesus, that your salvation will begin to speak loud. Your salvation will take over right now, take over in that situation, take over in that circumstance, take over your heart, take over your top. I says, now salvation and strength, and I pray again, receive strength. In that your area of weakness, in this your moment of weakness, receive strength in the name of Jesus. Strength of the Holy Ghost, strength to overcome, strength to break barriers, strength to pull down those walls down. Receive it in the name of Jesus. He says, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come into your home. I decree the power of Christ. Into your life, I decree the power of Christ. That in this very day, this very moment, the power of Christ overshadow, overtake all, the, all that the enemy is trying to do in your life. In the name of Jesus. He says, for the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night. Listen to that. Satan is the accuser of brethren. And the Bible says he accused them day and night. He's sleepless when it comes to accusation. That's why he will tell you it is your fault. It is your fault. Go and die. It is your fault. Why are you still alive? It is your fault. You have destroyed your life. It is your fault. There is no hope for you. That's his job. The Bible calls him is the accuser of brethren. Accuser who are the brethren? Christian. Children of God, those who love God, those who are ready to do the will of God, they are the brethren. He says, for the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God, day and night. He's even accusing you before God day and night. But do you know the good news? Jesus Christ is seated by the right hand of our God, making intercession for believers. The same way as he is accusing Jesus Christ, he also, the right hand of God, making, busy making intercession for you, making intercession for me, telling the dead, God, don't listen to him. 
telling God, ignore him. I have been there. I was there on earth. I knew what he went through. I knew what, I knew what they are going through. I have been there before. I have been tempted before. I have been in Gethsemane. When it looked like there was no hope. When you, it looked like you abandoned me. So I know what they are going through. The devil don't have any power to accuse you anymore. Because Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the one who loved you and died for you, is seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and I. Glory, glory, glory to his name. Hallelujah. So this is just for you. Let your hope be restored. There is nothing to lose hope about. There is nothing to give in to the devil about. You see, and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. That's the assurance of the word of God. It's going to be cast down in your family. It's going to be cast down in your home. It's going to be cast down over your family in the name of Jesus. And it says in verse 11, Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him. Hallelujah. And they overcame him. He didn't say they became losers. He didn't say that they lost the battle. He says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. The blood of the Lamb is certain. But what I need you to begin to do is the word of your testimony. God has his own to do. You also have your own role to play. The blood of the Lamb is there for you, but I, by the word of your testimony, you need to begin to think about the goodness of God. Rejoice in what God has done. Celebrate God's goodness rather than glorifying what the devil is trying to do. He says, and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. I want you to know today, God loves you. There is no doubt about that. The devil is doing something. That's his ministry. He will always continue to do it. But much more than what the devil is doing, God is doing very, very so much in your life. And I want you to take your eyes and focus on the sun that is shining from the Almighty God. The light that has come. That the darkness that you think is around you, they don't have any power again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to be giving our offering, but I know maybe there are some questions that we have today. But let's just get, take our offering before we go into our question. Don't forget you can test, you can sell. And you can go on our website to follow the given instruction. You can also go on our app and follow the given instruction. But as convenient as it may be for you, when you give this free will offering, it's a sign of your worship, a proof of your love for Christ. And A, who else do we love than someone who has loved always when we are lovable? That's our Jesus Christ, our Savior. And I want you to give to him generously at this moment. And for some people, you are paying your tithe today because you don't want to be tempted to just to, to, to spend it on something else. You don't want the devil to minister something to you to go and, and, and offend God or not obey God by spending what belongs to him. You can also pay your tithe right now. You sell it. You can test it. You can also directly go on the website or the app and be able to pay your tithe. And let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that you have given us strength to walk. And because of the strength you have given to us to walk, because of the favor we have to be able to get jobs, to be able to, the, 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 the ideas to run businesses, Lord, the advertisement for our business to blossom, we are able to make money, and here we are bringing what belongs to you, our tithe, the 10% of what you have given. Lord, accept it from us in the name of Jesus. Let it come before you, and as we give our tithe, we ask, O oh Lord, that you remember your covenant concerning tithe, and let it be established in our life in the name of Jesus. Lord, this worship and this love offering we also bring before you. Father, Lord, accept it in the name of Jesus, that all this offering we bring before you, let them count in the day of our needs. Lord, remember then when we come before you with our prayer and our request. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, we give you glory and honor. Let us bring back again and come back again to be able to sacrifice and to give more and more to you because your blessing will continue to increase in our life. Father, to you alone be glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to take maybe one or two questions. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, so the, you said that the Lord used um, the people in the boat spoke to him, that, to Jonah. 
you know, and um, try to tell, telling him that you you are not supposed to do this, you're not supposed to do that. And then the enemy also spoke to him, convincing him to jump into the water. So how do you discern which voice is right from God and which voice is the enemy? Especially when it seems like that's like a viable solution. One thing I can tell you is that God, God will not never tell you to go and commit suicide. And that was what Jonah was tried to do. Yes, as we go on, God brought salvation even when there was no hope. But I tell you, God will never tell you to go and do something that will claim your life. Because he's the giver of life. Uh, and he doesn't want to take your life like that. So, but when it comes to terminating life, that's what Satan does. So you have to know that there are certain things God can do no evil. Whatever is evil can never be from God. God cannot do evil. You know? So that's what I want us to know. And I've had people saying, well, if, if God is real, why is this thing happening? Why was there coronavirus? Where was this? Why was that? But I want you to know that, yes, does God know? There is nothing hidden from God. But is it from God? No. And this is where believers can always get their rescue. Because God does not do evil. So when, if as a believer you are sure you, and you know the God you are serving, even when there are evil all over the nations, you can tell God, exempt me. This is not from you. I am not going to be a part of it. And that was what we did in our sort of faith, even during the coronavirus, when, we, when God said, said, I'm going to take care of you. We know he can because he didn't originate the evil. Did, did he didn't know about it. Yes, but he's expecting his children to be able to know their identity in Christ, even in time of crisis, and be able to call upon him so that he can give them salvation. Don't forget that this is the world. Satan is the, is the, is the king of the world. But it's still in spite of that, God is still bringing salvation. That's why God, Jesus died for us, so that we can be able to get out of the grip of the enemy and so that we can have boldness and confidence to be able to ask God for anything. Hallelujah. If you have a spouse or parent that always talk down on you, how do you, you know, causing you to have a lot of self-guilt, how do you get out of it and how do you also let them know that this is what they are doing to you? Yes, you, 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 you almost answer the questions yourself. Because if your parents are talking to you that way, maybe they are not even believers. Maybe they don't know the, the essence of what they are doing. I believe that you can educate them. Uh, if they are Christians, because, I mean, some people are some Christians, but they don't get into the word of God to know what they can do and what they cannot do. In other words, they can be your parents and still be baby Christians. So uh, adulthood in Christianity is not about age. So you have to be able to see them down, and that's when it is very easy, when they are Christians. So you can really share the word of God with them and say, this is what the word of God says. So anytime you are doing this, you are working against the word of God. I'm sure they will be afraid and say, whoa, we didn't know. Even when they are not Christians, I believe that you can also say, I want, you to, I want to read something to you. It's in the Bible. And you read, them, read it to them and you give them understanding. Let them have knowledge that what they are doing is wrong, that you don't want them to put guilt on you. Even having said that, you, you can only control yourself. You, can, you cannot control what other people will do. Even when they decide that, hey, shh, I don't want to hear that. Take your Bible away. Do you think you now know Bible more than we know? You can put all those words aside. But the word of God is assuring you here, you know, that uh, uh, you are a child of God. Nobody cannot make you. It's only God who has made you. So uh, your salvation comes from the Lord. So you have to know who you are. And once you know who you are, it does not matter what, what name people give to you. Just set them aside because you know you are in Christ. So uh, you don't, don't depend on people to, make, to, 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 to actually celebrate who you are, but you have the, 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 you, you have the responsibility to keep on celebrating who you are, including your salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you have been blessed today by God's grace, and we hope to see you next week again when we continue with our godly wisdom from the book of Jonah. And I pray for you that the Lord God will resident in your heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God will direct your path. 
and whatever voice of the enemy coming to you at this time. Uh, we ask that the Lord will silence them in the name of Jesus. You will hear the, cause, the, the voice of God clear and loud in the name of Jesus. That grace to discern who is speaking, I pray that the Lord will give it to you in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Uh, have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Hallelujah.